This paper is about how to make transformers continue learning indefinitely after they are pre-trained. And we are talking not only about LLMs, but any type of transformer. So the idea here is to train different uh, LoRa adaptation matrices, LoRa adapters. So for each new skill, you have a separate uh, LoRa adapters that you would apply to the transformer so it knows this skill. And it can train a bunch of different LoRa adapters. And then depending on the skill, it can check the task, which LoRa adapter it needs, and then use that LoRa adapter. And you can continually indefinitely train more of these LoRa adapters. First, we need to know about this catastrophic forgetting. So what can happen is when you uh, train the large language model to do a new skill or give it new knowledge, you change the weights, but then those weights were useful for something else. So now they're changed. So now it forgot what it already knew. And even a small amount of information or training can change all of the weights or most of the weights. So it can catastrophically forget a lot of things it knew. So we need to be very careful when, it, when we change uh, models' weights. Continual learning is like a whole field of study that deals with this problem exactly. So how do you update weights without destroying previous information and knowledge of the LLM? And this paper isn't necessarily only researching LLMs, but this can be applied for a lot of types or even every type of neural network. So we have domain incremental learning where the labels are fixed, where the data distribution can change arbitrarily. For example, if a model is recognizing cats and dogs, and then we want to teach it incrementally to also be able to generate images of cats and dogs or to sketch them. So cats and dogs, those classes stay the same, but it learns new knowledge based on those classes. And class incremental learning where new classes or labels are added, like it can recognize cats and dogs, and now we teach it to recognize fish and elephant. I need to first explain what these prompts are, the old methods. So these are not text prompts. Uh, imagine you have an image and you divide the image into patches, like 16 by 16 pixels. And then each of those patches is encoded into a vector embedding. So now you have a sequence of vector embeddings that represents all of this is one image. So a prompt would be like a small vector that's appended before this sequence or at the beginning of the sequence. It can be one or two or a few vectors. And so for every new data set that you want to teach the model, and I'm not talking about large language models, I'm talking about, for example, vision transformer, but this can be this can work on a lot of different kinds of uh, models. So you append these few small vectors at the beginning of these images from this new data set. And this new data set that you want to teach to the model has its own prompt prompts. And so during the training, now we want our model to learn more, continually learn. So we're not going to change our base model that's classifying cats and dogs. We're just going to change these prompt vectors. So it will learn these prompt vectors based on this data set of, let's say, images of elephants and fish. fish. So these prompts at the beginning will be correlated and learned for this specific data set. And then in the inference, the model looks at images it tries to guess which data set or which prompts correspond to these images, and then it's going to append, prepend these prompts. And then it's going to be able to, those prompts will help it classify or solve the data set, solve the problems within the data set. Now, in this method, instead of learning those prompt vectors, this is going to learn uh, LoRa matrices, LoRa adapter for each new data set. So one LoRa adapter per new data set. So instead of learning the embedding vectors to update the input that we prepend to input, LoRa will learn to uh, vectors. LoRa will learn matrices that will be added within the model weights specifically to query and value weights in the attention mechanism. So at the inference, it looks at the images or task, it tries to guess from which data set it comes and then activates corresponding LoRa adapters. And LoRa is just 
if we have a huge uh, weight matrix, we can actually approximate that huge weight matrix with a lot of two very smaller matrices and uh, whatever the shape should be when they multiply they will give this big matrix but in these two smaller matrices there is a lot less numbers it's just using the way matrix multiplication works where from two small matrices with very few numbers you can by multiplying them you get a big matrix and we actually need to just store these two small matrices and learn them and so when they get multiplied and added to the big uh, query and value matrices, they change these matrices. And also every LoRa adapter will have its own output head. So, you know, in Transformer, you have a bunch of layers that can repeat. And at the end, just one output head that's going to give probabilities to every class. And so every LoRa adapter needs to have its own output head that's going to be used with it and the original output head will not be used with LoRa's. So this output head will correspond to the classes that this LoRa corresponds to as well. So per data set, one output head and one LoRa adapter. So that's going to be the quick overview of this idea. Join my school to become AI researcher. It's free for a bit more and then I'm going to make it paid.